Hello everybody and welcome to Lauren Loves Color. This is Lauren. We are back for part three in this series. Um, what we have done thus far, we are coloring out of the Easy Coloring Easy Coloring book by Jade Summer. Um, we are coloring this page here with these pumpkins and this is kind of a beginner tutorial series on some of the most common tools, some tips and tricks and things that I have learned um, through my last year in coloring um, and how to create a beautiful, simple page. So the last thing that I want to demonstrate are the use of Distress Oxides, specifically for the backgrounds of my pages. These are made by Ranger. They come in a wide variety of different colors. I have about 17 different colors. This one is a great one to use, especially if you're a beginner. They're not the cheapest. Um, you have to buy these individually. They come in a large ink pad like this. And just be aware, Distress Oxides and Distress Inks are two different things. I prefer, in this Amazon paper, utilizing Distress Oxides. They provide a more kind of diffuse, powdery, kind of soft-looking look. Whereas you can also buy Distress Inks, which are really like stamps, and they are um, a much bolder, darker, more intense look. Both really beautiful. Both can be used in different ways. Um, but this is what I really prefer for um, utilizing in my coloring pages. The color that we're going to be using today is called Frayed Burlap. This is a really nice, simple, easy background to use. I'm going to be utilizing a cheap makeup brush. You can find these tools and I'll of course link everything down below in the description box if I can. Um, the Distress Oxides you can pick up from Amazon, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, etc. And then also these brushes I got straight off of Amazon. They come in a variety of sizes that you'll see. Um, so you can do really large areas, small areas, but they're really meant to be a cosmetic brush. So I'm gonna be utilizing this brush here. Um, this brush is called Boutique. There's not unfortunately a number here, um, but um, the next two, it's kind of the third in the um, oval series, the third largest size is what I'm going to be, well the smallest of I guess this oval shape is what I'm going to be using here. And then the only other thing that I need, there's nothing I do to prep my page or anything like that. Um, what I like to do here is the important thing to know is really saturate your brush. So really get it on the ink pad there and then to blot it. And then what you're going to be doing is going in circles like this. So it creates kind of this nice diffuse little look. But if you don't dab your brush off, you're going to end up with kind of a large um, kind of splotchier blotch of color in one area. Maybe you don't mind that. Maybe you that's the look you're going for. Just be cognizant that you want to and that's why I always have a sheet of paper here is to kind of dab it off just a little bit before I start to rub. You're still going to have some inconsistencies. It's not going to be one consistent color but it's not going to create like one just big saturated um, pigment here. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to start up here on my page and just kind of a you know, random spot, and you're just going to be scrubbing almost like you would do with a paintbrush. I will tell you, doing this on Amazon paper is a little bit tough. Um, I've kind of gotten used to it over time. And at first you're going to start it and you're going to go like, oh my gosh, this is going to look horrible. But I promise you at the end, when you get your whole page done with it, it's going to look beautiful. It's just the, the process of doing it. I remember the first time I did this on a page, um, I was absolutely mortified and was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to completely throw away the page. But then afterwards was like, oh, okay, I see. And you'll find that once you kind of lay it down, it's got just a tiny bit of give, but it's not like a ton. It's not like you're going to be able to move it around the page a ton. And so you will see people that utilize distress oxides. And, you know, it's possible too that I just don't have the absolute right technique for distress oxides and maybe there's a better way. But I think that a lot of people, what they do is they prep their page with certain fixatives and sprays um, or, uh, you know, prep, prep, prepping fluids for the pages to make it or they're working on better paper that's a little more forgiving for some of these things and can create kind of a more subtle 
diffuse effect but I am too lazy to do all of that stuff so I just like to do something really really simple and easy the important thing to note about these two is they are layerable so if I put down this brown and let's say I wanted to go back in with some red or yellow or um, you know whatever you can layer these on top of each other however I do highly recommend that you practice doing that first before you lay them down also this does have kind of a powdery type of a finish to it so um, I guess something else I just really want to just make clear is it will go over black line work and will kind of like ghost your colors just a little bit so be careful not to get it on the actual image I probably should use a smaller brush here and go in I'll go in with a smaller brush as we get to some of these smaller spaces here it does have like a texture to it I mean it's definitely a uh, it kind of has a, it almost has a waxy feel to it. It dries pretty much instantly, so you don't really need to worry too much about smudging it or getting it anywhere or it getting too messy on your hands or anything. Probably takes just a few seconds to really dry. And that's one thing I like about it too, is you don't have to worry about it making such a huge mess on your page. And see like as it kind of comes together you it looks really beautiful and I have done acrylic over the top of this I've done palette pastels gel pen over the top and I'm telling you like you can put anything, pretty much anything over the top of this. I'm sure you could do colored pencil over the top of the Distress Oxide. So like if you were doing a night sky and you wanted to do stars or, you know, draw something, you can do that. You can also use, um, and I do this with my Distress inks a lot, is do stenciling. Um, and so put a stencil down and then kind of, you know, take one of these brushes and kind of stamp it on. Um, and that can create kind of a different look. Let me make sure I've got okay. Let me go in with this little guy and kind of go into some of these smaller spaces here. And that's what's nice about these little makeup brushes is there. Really easy to get in tight corners. And so I just wanted to show this to you because I feel like sometimes tutorials can be extremely overwhelming or tutorials that you can, I know for me, when sometimes I look up tutorials online, they're such doing such detailed pages. Um, but I'm just like, wow, I'm not even close to that skill level. <laughs> Excuse me. Or do I necessarily want to be? So this is just something fun and quick and like, you know, you're looking for that cute, looking for those Insta likes, make it look like you put a whole bunch of effort into it when you really didn't. I mean, from start to finish, if I was coloring this on my own, it probably would have taken me half an hour maximum, I think. Let's take a look at this here. Yeah, I think that looks great. And sometimes on some of these areas that have some darker spots, I'll just kind of rub them in and kind of mesh and mold it out a little bit more. And like I said, if you wanted to go and then, you know, add in some addition from another color, another green, or, 
you know, a red or, you know, whatever you wanted to add in there, you can, or you can just keep it totally simple like this, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep this page completely simple. I feel like from start to finish, like I said, this is three alcohol markers, three crayons, and one distress oxide, and that's it. And you will have created your just beautiful fall pumpkin page ready for the fall season. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, please let me know down in the comments below. Did you like this? Did you like this style? Do you want to see more like this from me? Um, I'm happy to do some more simple, easy kind of color along with me pages. Um, probably from start to finish, just like a whole hour. Um, I'll let you know what I'm using, what colors I'm using, and we'll just use some simple alcohol marker um, you know, crayons and something for the background, just something, keep it real simple, real fun, real easy. So if you want to recreate it yourself, you can. Um, if you do choose to recreate this page or something comparable or inspired to utilize what I have, um, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. I'm at Lauren Loves Color there. Share your page and tag me. I would love to see your work. I'd love to hear from you and let you in and just kind of give me any feedback. Is there something that I would, that you would change about the way that I do this or, um, let me know if you want to see more of this. I'm so happy that you made this recommendation. Thank you as well for just sharing everything with me, leaving all of the comments. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. I will see you guys in my next video and um, maybe some completed pages soon. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.